largest nursing strike in NHS history is underway. Clapham doesn't pay our bills. Claps aren't good enough for us anymore. Postal workers, border force staff, driving test examiners, national highways traffic officers, RMT members at Network Rail, and teachers in England and Wales are set to go on strike. My role in society is more than just teaching children. It's about like helping communities, and I've stopped being able to do that. The government took aim at striking ambulance teams today, saying new laws were needed to protect lives. The last option we've got is to strike. If they take that away from us, what have we got? I think the government needs to recognise that they're not going to break the strikes, no matter what tactics they put in. It is a month full of disruption. This is the first time that we've been on strike. It's the first strike in the RCN's history. I'm not a union rep, but I actually was quite against striking only a few years ago. I have had enough of um, inadequate pay by our government. I've had enough of our government not listening to us and, and ruining our NHS, because that's what they're doing. They're, they're ruining us. And if I don't make a stand for my patients, then who will? Because our government isn't listening. I get up at about five, go to work, leave the house just before six. Twelve and a half hours a day, minimum, is the shift times. If I'm lucky, I'll finish work half eight, maybe, at night. I'm the fourth generation of nurses in my family. This is what I was meant to do. But the really sad thing about that is that this year was the first year in my career that I've thought about what else I could do if I wasn't a nurse anymore because it's just becoming so difficult. I was supposed to have friends around last night and they were here with, with my wife and my housemate and I just, I came in, I said hello and I went straight up to bed and I thought I can't, I don't have anything in me to even give to socialise with people that I love and care about because I'm so drained. Yeah, as you know, this is day two of the strike. Um, very, very weak moment. Good Give us a honk. She doesn't support the strike, clearly. Are you working on commission? It's with a really heavy heart that we're here today. I started nursing in, a student nurse in 1986, and this is the first time that I've started to have sleepless nights because I'm worried about whether or not we're going to have enough staff for the patients that day. When do we want it? Now. now! We've got a workforce crisis, we've got a cost of living crisis, and we've got a pay crisis. They can't afford to pay their mortgages, they can't afford to pay their bills, they're having to use food banks. You know, people who were caring for the worst off people in this country for the last couple of years, especially throughout this pandemic, are now not able to feed their own children. I've had colleagues of mine that have been essentially made homeless because their rent has increased from what it was to more than double in a matter of a month. And how can anybody afford that? It's disgusting. Our government is disgusting. They have no respect for us. They're turning their back on the nursing profession. It's heartbreaking. Solidarity with the nurses! Go on, nurses! I would really like to have a photo of me handing this over to somebody, yeah, sure. even though I've got to give it online, right. apparently. Yeah, 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 no, no worries <laughs> at all, no worries. Um, so, I'm a teacher in Hackney, and we made a collection before the holidays to bring it to these nurses, because their fight is our fight, the same way that they are striking actually to save the NHS, to make it safe for patients, so that there are enough staff, it's exactly the same in education. But our ballot closes on January the 13th, if it's the turnout that's the worry, we're concerned that we won't reach the 60%. The result of our ballot came out last week and we had 42% turnout. You know, because of the legislation, the 50% threshold, and we've not been able to get the vote, then we can't strike. We can't really show the impact of what it will be for us to be out of the classroom for days at a time. If it wasn't for the railway works in Shildon, you know, the town wouldn't have built up like it did. 
was a prosperous area. Now people are not just living on a shoestring but they're expected to work on one as well. Public services are being run down, run down but still expected to work. People aren't coming to be teachers anymore. The profession's getting eroded and the government aren't doing anything about it. So this is my old school when I was 11 to 16. Oh, it was brilliant. I loved this place, I really did. It's closed, it closed down last, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Since then, there's been no secondary provision. I mean, I'm gonna have to send my children out of town. The oldest is going to secondary this year, September. For a start, I'm paying 60 pounds a month bus fare for him to do that. But I do worry that sort of taking away the collegiate spirit of the town just by shutting one, one community hub really, because it is, it, schools are community hubs. So, you know, it's up to other places to try to, I suppose, take on that load. I'm gonna pop into Children Alive. They're always asking for, for big coats for kids. So I've got some from my two to take there. So they have a food bank here, and they also have like a community hub as well. It's one of the warm hubs now. It's been really busy since we opened as a warm hub. What we've noticed is a lot more working families coming in, um, a lot more professionals coming in, just because they just can't afford to you know, make that decision between heating and food. I'm frightened, I'm quite worried for people really. So this is the community shop and takeaway. They come in, they get a basket of food and they take their donation to the till. Any adult who is hungry eats for free in our community takeaway. It's hashtag feed bellies not bins, you know, it's about saving food and saving, saving food. Can we have a piece of corned beef pie please? The stigma of using this it isn't a thing in, in, in children anymore. Everyone knows that you can come in here and you can get something relatively cheap. The only thing is you would never have seen it. Ten years ago, you know, it wouldn't have been here. It wouldn't have had the need to exist. And I can't donate to the food bank anymore, which is sad. My role in society is more than just teaching children. It's about like helping communities and the community that I live in. And I've stopped being able to do that. And that's, that's quite heartbreaking, really. <laughs> I've never thought of it like that before. I think I've just had an epiphany in the middle of Children Alive. As far as we are as a town, we are for the strikes. We are for the worker, because we are working people. How can the economy grow if people have got no money to spend? How are we going to keep our teachers? How are we going to keep our paramedics if something serious isn't done and the government don't take responsibility and do something about it? government needs a listen. These are big votes for strike action. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, I beg to move the bill. There comes a time when we can't let this continue, and that is why we need minimum safety and service levels. Sisters and brothers, so here we are again. Another Tory government, another attack on the fundamental human right to strike. I'm still a member of Unison but I no longer teach. It was just impossible really to afford my rent while I kind of stayed in the school. I couldn't really afford my bills or anything. One of the biggest problems at the school was like staff retention so it was kind of a stepping stone for people to sort of go in for a little while and not really get trained and then kind of get forced out eventually and try something else. It's quite, there's a big shortage so it can be quite easy to get into but there's nothing to keep you there when you're in there, you know. <laughs> facing a lot of cuts. We've lost about one in five of every firefighters across the country. We're seeing fire engines off the run all the time. We're seeing slower response times. Calls are just rising and they're going up through the roof. We're going to more climate change incidents, more wildfires, more flooding. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of medical emergencies as well. And we're still continuing to have to attend fires. Our last option we've got is to strike. If they take that away from us, you know, what have we got? If we are united, if we build our movement for ourselves, we will be unstoppable in this country. And we're going to change this country forever and change it in our favour. The 
laws themselves are draconian, but I also think they're on dangerous territory of repressing the right to organise. We'll have to resort to partial strikes, we'll have to resort to works to rule, we'll have to resort to overtime bans. We will not be cowed as a trade union movement. We will continue to defeat any law that they put in front of us and take the most effective industrial action that we can. Good morning, how are you? I'm all right. What have you got for me this morning? Uh, well, special today. Special? I've been tube driving now for about 15 years. Worked on the underground for a total of 21 years. When I joined in 2001, it was always known as a job for life. Um, and that's why I joined. So it was a backup plan initially, it was a gap year initially, but what I found was job security, I found great opportunities, I found a good salary, um, good benefits and a great pension. Hi, morning. Fast forwarding on our pensions coming under review, our terms and conditions are always being challenged. You know, that's a part of modernization. You know, you have to accept some form of modernization, not at the risk of safety, not at the risk of, you know, the human element. Remember, we're all great union. I represent cleaners all the time. We've had campaigns for our cleaners and those campaigns have been ramped up. All we want for Christmas is £15! An hour, An hour! The cleaners don't have the living wage. We're asking for a minimum of £15, a, £15 an hour and also to stop, end outsourcing. If they need time off, everything is unpaid. They don't get sickness pay. They don't get a pension. Um, so the cost of living, you know, makes it kind of impossible for them to be able to fight the way that they want to fight. You know, a, a day's pay being lost in strike action for them is catastrophic. NHS! 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 When I go to the picket lines of my comrades in other unions, the signage is all the same. You know, we want what is fair. There is talks of general strikes. You know, if it keeps on going on like this, that's what's going to happen. For us to get over the really high threshold and get a 90% vote for strike, I've never seen anything like this. We're all out here because we understand that what is at stake at the moment is not just about pay, this is about the future of education. For the first time, all of us, ordinary people, are in a situation where we cannot go on like this. Come on everyone! We're going to walk up to Manor House, meet teachers, staff from other schools, um, and then we're going on the demonstration in London. workers on strike, half a million today. We've got PCS, RMT, ASLEF, UNITE and then of course the NEU who are here today. So UNITE have got bus drivers out on strike today so don't take the bus if you want to come to the demo. Um, but we've got industrial action happening for the rest of this month. And is this the first time you've been on strike? No. Yes. It is for you. <laughs> and no for you? Yeah. Over the last well, many, many years, it's just a deterioration. We can't do our job properly, but we're knackered. That's not for the kids. And ultimately, that's who we're here for. You get fear in our power. <laughs> You're on camera being shown. Get down it. I've been in civil service for six months. I am being paid less than a London living wage. Right now, the cost of living is hard. I'm constantly seeing you? customers who are coming in for help and Long they're ways. worried about their financials and all their payments they have to pay, utility bills, and they just, they're struggling. Today is like as good as you get in terms of a, a general strike. We're not allowed to have one, but we've got one almost effectively. 
we're the people that teach at higher education, but further education, but we're aligned with everybody else.